It's January 2010 and I'm just doing a re-recording of a visit I did in 2008 to Suffolk and Cambridgeshire where I carry out various p pieces of family tree research um, exploring parts of Cambridgeshire and Suffolk and on this particular visit I stay uh, at a campsite in Cambridgeshire where I, I then go off and do work in the archives um, and the record office at Bury St Edmunds and that sort of thing, plus visit the graves and carry on the um, exploration. Anyway, on this particular visit I'm going to Little Well Neatham, which is a, the place where we lived when we stayed up there for six months in 2006, where we stayed at um, a bungalow called Ruhama. I go back, just have a little wander round and um, find that they d started building work on, on one of the, the remote areas there which is quite interesting and then I think I go off to Wood Ditton and Borough Green I'm not sure because I haven't listened to the tape and so I'm going from um, only what I've written down so here we are back in 2008 with Sheila I've got to Lidgate Church Tower Right, that was a sudden jump I was describing the tower at Dulham in Suffolk and then suddenly without any warning I'm talking about the church at um, Lydgate just an explanation There's fire of course and this is the church what is this church called? Big church tray with well worn wooden seats and this is where I believe one of my great 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 grandfather's sons was a vicar for many years. One of these sons, John. Could have been John Isaacson. Oh, it is open. Good. Let's see if there's any lights. Let's walk him around. I don't always don't want to go back to the car and get someone. Uh, I don't know if we turn the lights on so we can see them better. The switch does. Oh. I don't look very safe. It would be nice if we had a list of the vicars because um, it's all very plainly decorated. Anne, his wife, who fell a victim to a long and lingering illness at the 
age of 36 on December 8, 1819. These they which came out of great tribulation. Oh, they're under the ground there. Cemented under there. It's weird. Near the altar as well. I've taken a couple of pictures to point out its relationship in the church. So there was a memory to him. I think there will be one to Stephen Isaacson at Frickenham, but it was, it was all carpeted. grandfather, the Reverend Stephen Isaacson. He's also the brother of my times four great-grandmother, Anne Isaacson, who married James Mason. But that John in the ground there is the son of John. Because um, Reverend Stephen Isaacson's son, John, I believe, is interred within the chancel of Freckenham Church. Unfortunately there, like a lot of things, for some reason I must have turned off the recording because it goes dead blank. Whereas I've got pictures of um, a large grave I found outside in the grounds, de um, dedicated to Isaacson's, including John I uh, a John Isaacson. I've got pictures of it which will accompany this video anyway. But um, like I said, the tape was playing up. I did have a lot of trouble. I've sometimes been recording over for some strange reason. So, um, that's, that was the end of the Lydgate um, visit. Very brief, but I, like I said, I had recorded a lot more from that graveyard. But it hasn't come out because um, I've taped over it. Or it just didn't get recorded. Right, here's just a note for the end of this recording. I'm a bit disappointed because it seems to me that some of my tapes have got quite badly damaged because fortunately I recorded all these tapes onto my Ancestry.com site where I, where I store a lot of my information and it's a good job I've done this because I can actually copy um, those original cassettes back in order to put them on um, this um, CD, DVD um, because for example the Lydgate one was very bitty and I've got a much clearer recording that I put on and right the good news is I have got the recordings and I'm going to add these at a later date I should do another um, recording session like this for um, W MV with all the other information because I've I've got quite a lot of more information about Lydgate where I went all round the churchyard I even went back inside the church I've got loads of information description of the grave here the Isaacson grave outside um, and other people's graves you know I spent quite a lot of time and uh, I also got information when I went on to Newmarket and is you know I'm a bit disappointed my tapes have deteriorated so quickly hence the urgency to make sure I get all this recorded thank goodness for Ancestry.com and, and me taping um, those recordings when I did it about a year ago you know it's a good job I've done that really because once lost it's definitely gone that's why I've been keen to get on and do this 
you know, because I, I kept thinking, where's it gone? You know, where's all this information gone? I have still got it, fortunately, because I transferred that some of that cassette stuff over to Ancestry.com on my family tree site. So there will be another um, video, CD, DVD of, of Lydgate with the extra information. Over and out for now. This will be called part one of Lydgate, I think. Right, we can relax at last. I actually found another nice good tape that I must have done. It was in an envelope and it's it's got everything on there about the walk around the graveyard at Lydgate. So I'm just going to play it now before I go to bed. Good job I looked in that envelope because I I knew I had that tape because I'd put it on Ancestry. Alright, here we go. This is um part two of the Lydgate visit then in 2008 by Sheila. It's 2010 now and I'm just copying these tape recordings before they deteriorate further. Having a few keeps wanting to stop. Got batteries in it. It's playing up. It's getting older. This tape now. Anyway, I've been around the church. I've had a, started to scan the graveyard and I thought well, and I walked round the back and came back round the other side that I saw um, an old Isaacson grave. So I'm going to go back to that in a minute. I, I've got to remember that other tape's a bit damaged. I'm just having a look now. I'm looking around to see if I can see any. I thought I saw one a minute ago. Right, I'm kneeling at the grave, which is an Isaacson. I think it's John. Could be the son. Or, you know, he, whoever it was, died on the 17th of April, 1785, age 39. But I can't make it out very well. Um... It, or it might even be Sarah Ann. Not quite sure, but it's an Isaacson grave. Yeah, it's um, basically, it's a bit like a coffin shape. And it must have had, it's got some metal things in it. It must have had um, something else on there at one time. Yeah, it's an Isaacson grave and it's in the shape of a coffin with a headstone, a footstone, and then a body shape. So I'll just take some pictures of this. Like it's, I can't, don't know who exactly it is, but it's definitely an Isaacson. And that's positioned at the opposite end of the tower end, altar ends, right behind the altar window is that one. And there might be more. They're very, very hard to read. Very hard to read. But these are old as well. You can tell by the little cherubins on there. That sort of style. Who's this? Yeah. I'm making out a bit more. I can see the Reverend John Isaacson. Something of the Reverend John Isaacson. So it could be a, a daughter or a son. Um, it's hard to read it. But it is of the Reverend John Isaacson. So it's definitely a grave. Someone who died at the age of 39. So we know it can't be him. It might possibly be his wife, but I thought she was inside with him. Could be Unity. I'm not quite sure of the name, but I'll have to look up his children when I get back home. And then I'll be able to put whoever it is. There's a Harvey family here. There's Elizabeth, wife of Richard Harvey. There's Richard Harvey. And Charles Kitten Harvey. Richard died aged 94 in 1863, so he would have known the Isaacsons. 
as his wife would have. And Charles Kitten Harvey, eldest son of Richard and Elizabeth Harvey, he died 1853 as of age 50. This is just some of the neighbours, you know, fellow um, villagers that are buried here, possibly in Moore's family. Tape seems to be working better now. Yeah, James Moore, he died in 1860, age 63. Can't remember what year um, James died now, but... Yeah, and there's the Day family. It's not a huge graveyard, I'm just having a little wander around. I've put my a comment in the visitor's book so people know that some sentence relations of, uh, yeah, there's some tombstones here that would be pushed over in, in other places that are leaning to one side. Henry Balls, William Edwards, there's probably someone under that big bush. And I've got a few modern ones, I'll work my way around. James Leach. The vicarage is probably next door, I should imagine. Just scanning. I'm just amongst all the new ones. It's always handy to do the new ones as well. There's a wall. This is a wall. This is surrounded by a wall, brick wall, red brick wall, with a beautiful garden with a weeping willow next door. any more Isaacsons really because they did move around a lot. They did tend to move about because they were vicars. But he obviously ended his days here. I know Isle of Wight comes into it somewhere as well. Yes, very quiet location. It is a couple houses here and there, farms. Um, yeah, I should say that Isaacson Grey is probably one of the oldest ones that's been maintained right behind the church there. Um, and there might be, there was a couple nearby as well, but they were hard to read. I don't expect to see any more, really. I'm just going to have a look at the war memorial to see the names. Yeah. Gray, we've got some greys. Edith Mary Spencer Gray, OBE, the Reverend Ernest Audrey, director of this parish, 1889 to 19. 30. He's got an upright cross on three plinths, shared with a little one on a small plinth of um, Vivian Edith Audrey Gray, daughter of Leonard Audrey Gray. In a square surround, well, a rectangular surround. Then you've got Edith Audrey. She died in 1907, age, I think it's 18. And some catchpoles, I've seen that before. Arthur Robert Catchpole. He died in 1935, aged 78, and his wife Catherine Mary. She died in 1935 as well, age 82. One died in the April, one died in the November. Jollies, leeches, more leeches. More leeches. Is that the leech family around here? Charville. William Thomas Charville, died in 1956, age 80. Mox, another Jane Charville, she died in 1956, age 78. She died a day after William Thomas, he died on the 17th of January. And Jane died on the 18th of January. Died within days of each other. 
And we've got an Alice Chapman, 1887 to 1944. Louise Merritt, 1900 to 1970. Nellie Church, 1907 to 1997. There's a Rose family. Roses, more days. Deacons. Let's look at these in the middle a minute. <coughs> I said, I think I've got the only Isaacson little group there. Of course, they're also in the side the church. I'm going to go and sit down and have a cigarette in a minute. Yeah, so that's it. Really, I've done the churchyard. It's not very big. The church isn't badly maintained. The tower looks quite tidy. The, um, I never know what you call all the bits. There's the nave or what. The long part from the outside looks like it's got concrete cancer. Um, apart from that, isn't too bad, really. We've got this Isaacs and grave. Two Isaacs and Graves, I think, did I say one? Yeah, there might be one behind there. Oh, and then there's, um, I often see this. In behind railings, there's George Palsy. Now, I've got a feeling, and that was paving. Yeah, George Palsy. Um, son of Joseph. And Mary Palsy who died in 18-something or other. He's got metal railings around his. He must have been important for the village. I'm just going to take another picture of the Isaacs and Gray from a different angle. The graves stuck in bushes all over the place here, by the way. Oh, there's one... There's a river, there's a stream running behind, and they've got all these gravestones that have just been thrown in the bushes. There's Samuel Middleton here. He died in 18... Is it only? He died in 1891. He was age 50. They've just... He's just thrown in a bush, like lots of others. There's loads of them. So, you know, this, behind these, this ivy, you find loads of graves. So we're tidying up. Yeah, I do feel it sad when you see gravestones just thrown down, face down, discarded like that. You know, you can't even read their names. They've just been thrown to one side as if they're not important anymore. I think that's sad. That's what happens, see, if you have a stone. You just get thrown about. I just want to look at some of those pits and pit family. A couple of great big stones. Wake family. on one of the um, leaflets I've got, what church this is. What the name of it is. St. Mary's. Lydgate St. Mary's, that's the name of it. church. Um, I'm going down a little rickety lane. 
it was off the main road. I just took a, a guess and decided to get up this lane because churches tend to be hidden away. They're not always right next to the pub. There's a pond, which I haven't taken a picture of. There's a pond as we leave. Anyway, I'm off to um, Newmarket, going to Exon, Burwell, Bottisham. Right, I'm not sure of the time. It must be about up past three, I reckon. Um, I've now arrived at Newmarket. I'm not